Welcome everybody. I'm John Zadar and this is On Top and Hot where I like to bring you OTC stocks and penny stocks. They got something going for them. I bring you tickers that you need to be putting in your watch list and keeping tabs on. And how often do I tell you, if you want to get to know a company, get to know the CEO. I mean, literally he's the man behind the wheel. It's his dream driving the company. And as far as I'm concerned, a CEO with a dream is the greatest asset any company can have. And in saying that, today we are privileged to be talking to the CEO of American Leisure, ticker AMLH. This is Adrian McKenzie Patisar. Hello, Adrian. How are you today? Hey, John. I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for having me today. How are you? Oh, it's our pleasure. We are really excited to have you here. Now, I've heard that you have a new company fresh on the market. AMLH, but I also hear this isn't your first rodeo. You've actually got quite a few public companies already under your belt. Can you catch us up with some of that? Absolutely. Uh, well, I started in the small cap market back in uh, 2008, 2009, when the world was falling apart. And um, literally, I had no choice. I, I was a sell side broker. I used to clear paper for a living. And they were uh, the, the regulators were basically just um, getting rid of that business. And as we see, in the brokerage world, there are very few brokers now that can actually take mm. OTC paper. So that was my business. And you know, in 2008, 2009, I had to jump on the other side because they were scaling it down. Mm -hmm. So that being said, um, I've been a founder, I've been an investor, I've been an investor relations guy, I've been a CEO, I've been a janitor for <laughs> many public companies. It's uh, a lot of hats. I, can, I call myself a corporate janitor because I usually come in, clean up the mess that other people have left behind, right. and try to build some value and some equity for the shareholders and myself included. Mm -hmm. So you used to also be the CEO of DNAX, DNA Brands, and you just resigned from them recently for this new opportunity. Do I have that right? Uh, yes, you, you have it pretty much spot on. Um, I ran DNA Brands from 2016 till uh, December of 2021. Mm -hmm. A great company. Um, it had its own issues, but the reason why I resigned was I really wanted to focus my time and efforts on AMLH. I found DNA Brands was just taking up a lot of my time, a lot of my resources. And DNA Brands, it just came to a point when there was really nothing else I could do. I came in, I cleaned up all the toxic debt, got rid of all those toxic guys. You know, we did we did two um, reggae's. We unfortunately we had to reverse the company once or twice, but that was to get the bad seeds out of the equation. And right. uh, now I've handed it over to a group that's um, basically a one-stop shop. They have deals, they have banking, they have people on the street. So it's a, it's a good group of guys that I've worked with in the past uh, mm -hmm. and I'll continue to work with. They're, they're up in Georgia. And um, I really feel confident what they're bringing to the table because um, we've spoke about the possible deals to drop into DNAX. And um, from what I can see, they have some really nice things that they're looking to plug into the into the vehicle. That being said, it gives me the opportunity now to really focus on AMLH because AMLH is really my baby. Um, DNAX, it was more of a cleanup job. So okay. I owned DNA, our, our AMLH in 2018 and with um, you know OTC markets working in collaboration with the SEC to, to make that um, September 28th deadline last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I really had to either, you know, uh, you know the old equation, something or get off the pot. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I, 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 had to, I had to pull the trigger. Uh, that, right. that being said, you know, I cleaned up the company. Um, I got rid of a, any old legacy issues that the company might have had. I've redomiciled it. It used to be a Nevada Corp. It's now a Colorado Corp. Uh, I'm up to speed with OTC markets. Unfortunately, OTC markets were a little uh, behind the times as far as updating on the company because the TA had had some issues with OTC markets, but all that is resolved now. Right. Uh, what we see uh, on OTC markets is the correct shares authorized, shares mm -hmm. issued, shares outstanding, shares in the float. So AMLH is current and as current as today. Great, great. great. Now, ALMH is going to be a Holdings company, correct? Well, it is a holding company. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate and really get into the Web3 space. Now, okay. I say Web3 because I'm not trying to jump on the metaverse train. 
in my opinion, that's a train that um, has left the station, but might be coming back. So I like to leave my um, my opportunities broad. Web3 incorporates a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It incorporates crypto. It incorporates NFTs. It incorporates the metaverse. It incorporates coins as currencies. Now, when you say Web3, are you talking blockchain? Absolutely. It incorporates blockchain as well. Right, uh, right. Because there's a lot of people that don't know the terminologies do blend with each other. Well, that's why I want to keep it very, um, let's say, generic. Say mm -hmm. Web3. I want to keep my options open. I don't want to limit myself or the shareholders to one specific project. Because what I'd really like to do is build uh, American Leisure, AMLH, as an incubator. We're going to take investments in different projects. Right. Uh, right now, I'm speaking to three different groups. I have a project um, that I'm looking at possibly getting into in the, in the Bitcoin mining space. Mm -hmm. We have a software project we're looking at that holds um, anywhere from 10 to 20 patents. So, um, you know, it, yeah. it, I, I was told 20, but I, I'd like to stay conservative and say 10 because um, <laughs> I've gone through the patents. Some of the patents are old. Okay. And, you know, I, I like to be conservative. I don't like to be like, oh, rah, rah, rah. So we're, so we're talking. So you're looking for companies that have got great ideas, but just haven't got them prototyped yet. They're, they're not out there actually doing any business. You're going to help them come to the forefront. And, and most importantly, value, create value and identify right. value. Um, this specific company that I'm talking about with the patents, they actually are a live up and running company. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've, been, they've been around for many years. Their patents are very interesting in the telecommunication and the software space. And, um, you know, we are working through the logistics and the negotiations right now. Um, you know, a lot of people, they see and they hear on Twitter, uh, I, I might try to give an update and they run with it. I would ask people to err on the side of caution. I try to update the shareholders so that they can be informed and I can be transparent. Right. But, you know, sometimes you gotta, like Kenny Rogers say, you gotta know when to fold them, right? You gotta know when to walk away. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've evaluated projects in the past. I, I had a project that we were we were we were about to pull the trigger on, and we were going to work alongside uh, the yachting industry. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I had to walk away because there just wasn't enough value for the shareholders, in my opinion. So, um, and I get a lot of questions about that. People are always asking me, "What's what's going on with that with, with the Navy project or, or the yachting project?" Because the hints were very, very subtle. Because I was just trying to keep people updated. Right. We've, we've since have to had to walk away from that project, mm. and um, I can walk away from that project knowing I uh, I did all the due diligence. But more importantly, I had my shareholders' um, best interest at heart. So we walked away, and I felt I, I felt no problem walking away because I knew that this project, particular project, was not for us. But I'm very happy now because look, yeah. in retrospect, here we are in 22. Um, getting into the Web3 space, and I have very nice projects in front of me, and I'm going to pull the trigger on on a few of them here in, in the, this year. This year. Now let's talk about something that's a little more delicate, but very important. I'd like to talk about your share structure. I noticed you had an increase here recently in your authorized shares. Could you maybe give us some insight to your reasonings and the benefits that you see to that decision? Absolutely. So when I took over the company in 18, um, the company was fully diluted. There was 4 billion shares authorized and basically there was 4 billion shares issued. Mm -hmm. So since then, I've, I came in, I cleaned up the company. Um, and just so we know, when I say clean up, all this clean up work is coming out, out of my pocket. I'm paying for it. Okay, so when shareholders give me a hard time, oh, we have shares, you know, what are you doing for the shareholders? Let's get one thing clear. I'm paying for this. So who has the most to lose? It would be me. Right. We talk a lot about people like uh, Karen Courier, George Sharp, SS yep. Monopoly, Alpha Ridge. Yep. And I tell everybody, they have an investment. They want a reverse merger. These people don't make any money until they finish the job they started. Absolutely. So that's what, what I see you as doing. It's your own money out there. <laughs> you're the last person who wants to be playing games because you're the first person who wants this to succeed. So I definitely think, like I said, a CEO with a dream is the greatest asset a company has. Well, thank you. Well, this is, um, this is my retirement money right here. I've told <laughs> people this many, many times. This is my retirement fund here. So to answer your question, mm -hmm. so 
first of all, I increased the shares authorized in November of last year. It's okay. only that OTC markets just caught up uh, with the TA and they've got on the same page. Mm. So it's now six and a half billion shares authorized. And it's been that way since November of last year. And, and since then, I have not issued a, a single share. So that being said, we have enough, an, an additional two and a half billion shares sitting there that, that I'm going to use as currency to make a deal. Right. I'm not just here. I'm not just going to hand it out willy nilly to, to, to Tom, Dick or Harry. It's there. It's currency. And we're going to make a deal with it. Okay. That being said, more than likely, if I make a deal with the with the currency, those shares won't be hitting the market for any length of any any near term share any time, unless you know we go into the reg A, and that's a whole different beast because we will have to register some shares here or there in order to raise money. And, right, sure. You know, but that being said, I work with funds. I don't work with mom and pops. I work with funds that they're in this for the long game. They, they, they don't they're not buying the shares today so they can sell them tomorrow like a lot of people and short-minded traders do right um the people i work with they are in for the long game so they understand the value they understand what i'm trying to bring to the table and um you know they understand that we're not just going to buy shares today and sell them tomorrow that's are i'm, not, you I'm not be doing an a reg sorry are you going to be doing an a reg a reg a absolutely we should be filing a reg a this week oh really yeah, absolutely. The draft, the draft is done. I'm just waiting to plug in a couple, a couple points and numbers, and it should be filed with Edgar any day now. It should have been, it should have been done last week, but you know, waiting on attorneys and accounts, and sometimes it's beyond my control. Now you say you're talking to a couple of prospective companies that you would like to bring into the holdings. Uh, how long ETA wise, do you see anything actually get, getting close to being solidified a letter of intent or something like that? Oh, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that done yesterday. <laughs> so, so that being said, I'm taking, uh, I am taking so, so some precautions. I'm actually taking a business trip here shortly to go out to the West coast to go deal with one particular group, but all things being equal, I would say before the end of the month, we should definitely see some news. Oh, that's exciting to hear. Did you hear that, everybody? Before the end of the month, told you the CEO knows. <laughs> don't hold, don't hold me to that. Obviously, there are you know uh, that's what I would want. Right, you right. Understand. That's what you're shooting for. And you understand, sometimes things are beyond my control. I have to put it Absolutely. to the attorney. I got to put it to you know. We got to make a deal. We got we got to line things up with certain shares. Oh, sure, lots of contingencies, but. You're the man in the batter's box, and I got hope you're going to hit the ball. <laughs> and, 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 and to um to make your shareholders feel a little more comfortable, what I'm looking to do is if I do structure a deal, we're going to do a deal in preferred shares. So I'm not just going to dilute the company to dilute it. Right. A preferred share offering is always better for everybody because number one, you don't dilute the deal. Number two, you don't have any shares really coming to the public market. And number three, the, the, the common shareholders like it because they're still in somewhat of control. They're not feeling too diluted because it's not hitting them immediately. Now, obviously, these are preferred shares. They have a holding period. They could be diluted, but that's a year or two down the road. Right. And, right. Uh, you know, I would hope that's the case a year or two down the road because that's the whole purpose of the exercise is to build the business. Now, Adrian, I hear that AMLH has a lot of international interest as well. Can you explain that to us? Um, well, yeah, sure. Um, well, I can't really explain it. <laughs> they were there before I, I was, I was part of the equation, but right. what, I will tell you, what I will tell you is this, um, going back to when the company was built, um, there was a huge, you have to have a minimum of 35 shareholders. So a big portion of those 35 shareholders were from South Africa, Israel, and Italy. That's just fact. So that being said, um, the Israelis, pretty much, the Israelis have really been trading the stock a lot. I deal with a lot of Israeli trading groups. Uh -huh. I speak to, to uh, definitely, it's the Israelis. I, I have they bombard me with questions and emails. They are they are a major part of this trading group. So I have a big, it has a big Israeli um, pop, shareholder base, and um, Good that being said, that's great because some of the best technology is coming out of Israel. So. Yeah, one, yeah. Of our, one, of our, one of our partners who we're, we're discussing a potential um, incubation project is out of Israel. So I'm loving it. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't I, I don't care where they're from. 
shareholders. You can't hurt the company, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be from anywhere. I don't even care. Shareholders are shareholders. All our yeah. money, all our money is green. <clears throat> and um, what I would, what I would, would wish though is the shareholders tr traded a little longer term. You know, a lot of these traders are very, um, you know, tra buy short today's, term today's, turnover today's day long. trades. Yeah, I'm about the long game. This, this company for me is all about the long game. So what I would say is any investors who are in here should, like I always tell the investors, use your Vegas money, not your mortgage money. But that being said, you know, build a position like Warren Buffett says, you know, buy when there's blood in the street, buy when no one else wants to buy right. and sell when you're in a profit, you know, make money. I, I want people to trade this stock all day long. Um, that's the only way we can create liquidity and the company can um, can grow. Agreed. Is there anything else that you have going on that we may want to know that you can share with us now? Hmm. Hmm. Let me think. Such as what? Throw a few things out there for me. Oh, I don't know. You're the man behind the wheel. <laughs> I was hoping because I've looked around and there's not a lot of information yet, like a website. How soon do you plan on having a website up? That's a good question. Uh, we're working on one. We're working on one. That Honestly, I'll be straight up with you. That's not my first priority. Uh, right. my, my first priority is to solidify a deal. So then once I have a deal, we can cater the website to, um, to reflect the deal. But, you know, that's a great question. And, you know, that being said, you know, it's something I should put on the priority block because, you know what, as an investor, you're an investor. I don't have a website. So that's pretty disheartening or probably at least it it's does come up often in comments. People do mention a new website as a catalyst for moving the stock. So, yeah. You know what? I, will get, I will get right on it because, like, like, like you said, nobody knows my company better than me, but nobody knows the investors better than you and the guys on uh, – you know, in the trenches, buying and selling the stock. Right. So, um, please, I, I would take I would take any advice. I, I'm not <laughs> an ignorant guy. Uh, sh ask shareholders. I pick up my phone. I answer emails. You Good. know, the email is info at amlh.net. Please feel free to send me any um, advice. I, I I take all suggestions. Fantastic. Well, we have definitely. Enjoyed having you here. I'm hoping that you'll come back as things progress, that you'll ke keep us in the loop, catch us up. Uh, new and exciting opportunities is what we're always looking for. That's what the OTC market is about, Absolutely. getting in early and riding that train all the way up. So hopefully you'll do that for us, Adrian. Absolutely. I will be on the next time we have something to bring, the, bring to the company or excuse me, bring to the public and please have me back. Yeah, feel free to call me if you've got news. I will make room for you. Awesome, awesome stuff, man. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Adrian. You can get information, as he said. You can talk to him right through his email. He's willing to answer questions. This is American Leisure, ticker AMLH. Just fresh on the market, clean with a CEO with a dream. Thanks for showing up, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me, John.